Now that we're much more comfortable with finding the derivative, let's take a look at an application. So we're going to apply the derivative to the position function. And the position function gives us the position, which of course would mean the height of a free falling object neglecting air resistance at time t. So this is the position function. G represents gravitational pull. So we're going to use either 32 feet per second squared or 9.8 meters per second squared. Which one we use will depend on if all of the values are in feet or if all of the values are in meters. T of course represents time. V sub zero is the initial velocity. So the velocity at time zero and S sub zero is the initial position or starting height. So uh, the object's height at time zero. So sometimes they're going to give you the position function. Sometimes they're going to give you the information that you need to write the position function. But the important thing to understand is when we take the derivative, we're finding the slope of the function or the rate of change. You know, slope is the same as rate of change. So if I'm finding the rate of change of position, that's actually just the velocity. So if I'm finding the rate of change of the position, that's the velocity. So that means if I take the derivative of the position function, I'm going to get the velocity function, which will give me the velocity of the object at time t. For our first one, we're going to work together and we're going to solve all the types of questions that you will typically get for a position function. So I'm going to start with the coin is dropped from the top of a building that is 256 feet tall. So notice here, I do have the position function in case you don't have it memorized yet. So I need to determine the position function and then the velocity function. So for S of T, notice this is given in feet. Therefore, G must be 32 feet per second squared because it's in feet. So S of T is negative one half and then 32 feet per second t squared plus v sub zero. So what's the initial velocity? Well, the coin is dropped. Dropped means it's not already moving. So zero t and then s sub zero is the starting height. So from the top of a building that is 256 feet tall. So plus 256. And then I just need to do some cleanup negative 16 t squared plus 256. Now you may be tempted to rewrite this as negative 16 and then t squared minus 16. And you can certainly do that, but it's not super helpful because I'm also being asked to find the velocity function. And when I find the velocity function, I'm taking the derivative. So it's much easier without dealing with the parentheses and all of that. So S prime of T is using the uh, power rule, negative 16 times two, so negative 32, and then T to the two minus one, so T to the first. And then the derivative of 256 is zero. So it's just negative 32 T. Now we're being asked to find the time required for the coin to reach the ground. So again, this is just a matter of being able to take words and say, what does this mean mathematically? So when the coin reaches the ground, that means the position must be zero. So keep in mind that if this is the position function, what this is going to look like is some upside down parabola, upside down because it's a negative. So it makes sense that I'm going to get two solutions and one of them is going to be negative and one of them is going to be positive and you should find them both, um, but only the positive one will make sense in terms of the question. So here, if I'm asked at what point does the ball reach the ground or the coin reach the ground, I'm going to set S of T equal to zero. So zero equals negative 16 T squared plus 256. Now from here, it's up to you how you solve. You can factor, you can, because there's no middle term, I'm just gonna subtract 256 from each side. 
to get negative 256 equals negative 16 t squared. I'm going to divide each side by negative 16, so I'm going to get t squared is equal to 16. And then I'm going to take the square root, and I'm going to end up with two solutions, plus or minus 4. So negative 4 and positive 4. Now, when it asks what's the time required for the coin to reach the ground, obviously the negative 1 doesn't make sense, so I'm just going to disregard it, and I'm going to say the coin reaches the ground at, five, at 4 seconds. The last question says, what's the velocity of the coin on impact? So it's saying, now that you know when it reached the ground, 4 seconds, what is the velocity at that time? So now I'm going to use s prime of t, which I should have written is v of t, that's the velocity function of negative 32t. So now I'm going to put v of 4, because I want to know at what point um, or what is the velocity of the coin on impact? So negative 32 times 4, and again, that's going to give me negative 128. So the question is, why is it negative? Does that make sense? When we're dealing with velocity, again, this negative is just telling us the direction. So I'm going to say the velocity of the coin is 128 feet per second, not negative, moving toward Earth or moving toward the ground. Now, why is that? Because the negative only tells me is the velocity moving upward or is the velocity moving downward. I have a question for you to try as well. I'm asking you the exact same things we did on the last question. Uh, the only difference here is we're going to use meters per second. So for G, we're going to use 9.8 instead. So I would like you to press pause um, and try this question. And then when you are ready, press play to see how you did. So again, I'm going to start by finding the position and velocity function. So the position function I'm just going to use this template right here. I've got negative 1 half. I'm going to use 9.8 for g and then t squared. Now the initial velocity is v sub 0 and that is given to me here at 24.5 meters per second. So 24.5 t and then s sub 0, remember that's the starting height. The ball is shot upward from the surface of the earth so it's starting at height 0. So let's do some cleanup for the position function. Negative 4.9 t squared plus 24.5 t. And then of course we're going to find s prime of t because that's going to give us our velocity function. So my velocity is again using the power rule here. Negative 4.9 is my constant, but then the derivative of t squared is 2t to the first. So essentially it's negative 4.9 times 2 or negative 9.8 t to the first. And then 24.5 t, 24.5 is my constant, t, the derivative, is 1. So it's just plus 24.5. So that is my velocity function. Now I'm going to find the time required for the ball to reach the ground. So I'm going to set s of t equal to 0, because that would be the position is 0. So 0 equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 24.5 t. Then I'm going to solve however I want. In this case, I've got a t that I can factor out of both. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative t. So that's going to give me a positive 4.9 t minus uh, 20, oops, 24.5. And from here, I can just use the zero product property. So obviously, if negative t is equal to zero, then t is equal to zero. That's one of my options, but I already knew that because it started at the surface of the Earth. So I'm going to take 4.9t minus 24.5 and set that equal to zero. And so I'm going to add 24.5 to each side. And then I'm going to take 24.5 and divide it by 4.9, and that gives me 
5. So the ball is on the ground at t equals 0 and t equal 5, but they're asking what's the time required for the ball to reach the ground. So not when it starts, but it takes 5 seconds to reach the ground. And finally, what is the velocity of the ball on impact? So the velocity of the ball on impact is V of 5. So that's negative 9.8 times 5 plus 24.5. So negative 9.8, I've got to, sorry, use my calculator here, plus 24.5 gives me negative 24.5. So why is this negative? Does it make sense that it's negative? So again, it does make sense that it's negative because this negative essentially tells us the direction and it's moving downward. So when I answer the question, what's the velocity? I'm going to say the velocity of the ball is 24.5 meters per second moving toward Earth. Again, the negative in this case just tells us the direction. Up next, we're going to learn two more very useful rules for derivatives, which are the product and quotient rules.